What have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out RV Daydream. And I've got my old clothes on because I'm going to do a little bit of work on the camper. It's a really nice day out. Uh, the clouds are breaking up. We had some rain. The ground's a little bit wet. And we're going to have some nice weather tomorrow. So I want to pull this awning out, let it air out. It's the first time that I'm going to have it out all year. And uh, oh, we got some little bugs around here. That's interesting. <laughs> I want to talk to you about a couple of things. Um, the camper is going to be opened up today. And when I say opened up is hook up the electrical. The 30 amp cord only comes so far that's with the RV. I have an adapter. I run a real heavy extension cord then at that point up to the 110 outlet. I do not run my air conditioner. I don't run my microwave, although I could probably get away with it on the microwave. If you don't know on your air conditioners, just because they start and run does not mean that it's okay. So don't just plug it into a 110 outlet and think, oh, it's coming on and it's getting cool in here. Everything's all right. You need to check your voltage because if you see what kind of voltage is actually making it up to your air conditioner, you'd be surprised. Initially, when you first start it up, it might be okay, but as it gets warmer and it's running, it will make it to where that compressor just kind of engages and doesn't do what it's supposed to, and it will make it fail. So make sure you have the correct amperage going into your camper before you turn on that AC unit. Now, I usually take my cords and I try to hide them from the sun as much as possible. And what I mean by that is I'll take some kind of a conduit or some drainage pipe or something and run the cords through it. And then at the connection, I'll actually put it in an old coffee can. Um, it's actually a plastic coffee container, but I'll run my cords in there and then make the junction to where there's no water or moisture really seen there. Because I really like to make it to where there's no chance of electrical short. Uh, the other thing I want to talk to you about and I need your input on is the tires. Now within uh, two, three weeks maybe, uh, we're going to go ahead and get the tires that we need for this camper so badly. What I want to get from you is some kind of input on the tires. What have you used as far as trailer tires and what kind of experiences have you had? And I really, I'm a negative type of person as far as what I like to hear. I'd like to hear the negatives. Like when I go into read reviews, I immediately go into the negatives. And the reason that I do that is because there's a lot of times the negatives that people are complaining about just don't apply to me or don't bother me at all. Just like whenever I did a review on the uh, propane tank cover, if you want to check that out, uh, that's in my uh, video playlist. Uh, people were complaining about sometimes the door comes off. Well, I made a real easy modification and that door won't ever come off and I don't have a problem with it and I'll never have a problem with it. So that's one of the things that I really like to hear the negatives about the tires so I can decide if that's something that I gotta be concerned about. Uh, the other thing that I wanna know about, number two, uh, the load rating that's on these tires is a uh, C, um, which is like 1,800 pounds. However, I see that I could probably get away with a D, which is a little bit more expensive. Is there any benefits to that? I would think that a higher rated tire would do better, but I don't know if, for example, it would act as if uh, the tire is overinflated. Whenever you run a car's tire, you should inflate it to whatever your door jam says, whatever the manufacturer recommends for your vehicle. Not the tire, not what the, says max on the tire, what the manufacturer recommends. Because your suspension and the way the vehicle set up all determines uh, the ride that is going to be provided to you and the safety. So if I take a tire that's supposed to be run at 35 pounds of pressure and I bump it up to the max because it says right on there, like on some of the touring, the grand touring tires, you can run like 50 pounds of pressure. The car handles differently because of that and it might actually be unsafe. Is that gonna be the same thing if I go up a load rating on the tires? I mean, I've got C's on there now. I could probably run C's, but I could also probably run D's. I just wanna know if there's any ill effects to doing that. Number three, if I buy the tires in this area, um, which I'm in the Midwest or kind of on the east coast of the Midwest, so also east, I don't know, what is that, Middle East? <laughs> Do I live in the Middle East? <laughs> I, I know right up the street about four miles is Damascus. <laughs> so maybe I do live in the Middle East. But what I wanna know is if I buy a tire that is sold kind of exclusively in this area, that's not gonna do good if I'm out in Utah and I have a, a warranty problem with a tire where tread separates or something crazy. 
And I don't know if there's any national manufacturers out there that would be a good choice uh, to run and have a good warranty across the country almost anywhere you go. So what I'm worried about is if I buy a tire that's sold exclusively over in this area versus somewhere else. And I wanna tell you about my other choice as far as where to buy the tire, and I'll tell you why I'm hesitant. It's Walmart. Walmarts are everywhere. They sell tires at almost all the super centers, as far as I know, and I would assume that their warranties are relatively easy to get handled. And I know there's national chains that are out there like National Tire and Battery and Discount Tire and, of course, Goodyear stores, but I don't want to spend an arm and a leg. Um, the problem that I have with Walmart is this. Our local Walmart, uh, as far as I know, I heard something about everybody getting fired in there. I don't know what the deal was. Something about stealing, I, who knows? Uh, that's kind of shaky. And uh, on a personal level, two things. Uh, my father, he purchased some tires at Walmart for his minivan years ago. And unfortunately, they underinflated one of the brand new tires. They did not put a lug nut on one of his rims. And on the other side, they left two lug nuts loose, I mean really loose, like just over finger tight. Uh, I couldn't believe it. It's, it was incredible. So that's scary. But also on a very personal level, one-to-one uh, -one experience, I had a uh, 1999 Isuzu Amigo and I was going to transfer shops to Florida. I was driving back and forth to Florida, pulling a really small trailer and I needed new tires. I went into Walmart. They had a really good deal on Goodyear trackers, which were not an all-terrain tire, but they were kind of an aggressive pattern. And uh, they looked nice and they were a good price. And he was happy to get them on my vehicle for me. But I immediately noticed there was a weird vibration and I was having a problem with uh, uh, something going on with the ride. It just didn't feel right. So I took it back and he said something about the alignment and I just had the vehicle aligned. So I, I didn't think that was it, but I went ahead and took it back to a shop, uh, had them check the alignment and they said, yeah, everything looks really good. I don't see anything that's wrong in there. And uh, the vibration existed. So I took it yet to another shop uh, that was a little bit more expensive, but they had more specialized equipment there. And they said that my alignment was fine. There was nothing wrong. They didn't have to do anything. And it sounds like that the tires needed what they call a radial force balance. If you're not familiar with radial force balancing, what that is is they take the tire and mount it on a machine and then they have a couple of rollers that push on the tire to simulate road force. And then what they do is they check as that tire spins around how much pressure is being pushed on those rollers to see if the tire has actually been molded out of round. I mean, when it comes right down to it, you can balance uh, an oval football. Whenever you spin it, you can put weights on it to balance it out where it spins concentric. But the problem is, is it's still oval. So if you try to roll that football, it's still going to flop down the, down the road. And that's what I was experiencing with those tires. Uh, they said that they didn't really see any of that whenever they checked it out. And I told them that it would definitely show because I was getting ready to go to Florida and come back. And uh, sure enough, after 2,400 miles, I brought it back and I said, look at the wear on these tires, which was pretty incredible. And immediately he jumped right in and said, well, I'll go ahead and get you a new set of tires. I don't know if it's gonna correct the problem, but here you go. We don't have the Goodyear Tracker series anymore. We have the Tracker 2s. And I'm thinking right away, why didn't you tell me that in the first place? There's obviously a reason that they got rid of the trackers and they're now into the Tracker 2s. And still, that was eight years ago, nine years ago, and they're still selling Tracker 2s. Those Tracker series didn't last very long. They had a problem with them because they put those Tracker 2s on there, everything went away. The wear went away, the vibration went away, the handling, everything was better all the way around. So that's why I kind of hesitate on Walmart. Uh, not the bad mouth, anybody working at Walmart or the stuff that you sell. I'm just saying locally, my experience, what I had and what my father had and uh, what's been going on with uh, the personnel that's been working locally. So that's what I want to know from you guys. What kind of trailer tires do you recommend and why? And uh, do they have warranties that are nationwide, which I hope I don't have to use? But it's probably going to be one of those things where I'm going to go with an inexpensive tire and just hope that I don't have any problems. Carry a spare with me just in case. But I'm gonna jump on that today. I'm gonna to do that to the camper. Uh, I'm also going to uh, fill the fresh water tank and pressurize all the lines. 
Again, to get out of that antifreeze. I'm going to turn the bypass off for the hot water tank to let the hot water tank fill up, check for leaks. And I might actually fire up the propane to heat the hot water tank because I've been running off the uh, uh, element, the electric element that I installed last summer, almost exclusively uh, whenever I heat the water. Uh, the thing we like to do is keep the camper plugged in. Uh, I don't plug the battery in or use the battery because the charger is an older charger and I think it might overcharge the battery if I leave the battery hooked up all the time um, because whenever it's plugged into the wall uh, the camper will charge the battery if there's a battery attached. Uh, again, I don't think there's enough of a regulation going on there that it might not overcharge it. I'll have to check one day. I might check to see if it has some sort of a shut off. But what I'd like to do is leave the camper hooked up. That way we can actually utilize the camper. I'm not going to lie to you. There's been times that uh, it's time for me to take a shower and somebody's been in the bathroom here and I've come out and take a shower in the camper. Um, we actually had a little camp out night one time in the camper. We just wanted to uh, get away from the house and turn off all the electrical devices and come out here and just hang out. Uh, it's kind of like sitting on your porch but uh, with uh, you know the accommodations to keep you warm and uh, also keep you dry in case it rains. So uh, it's, it was just a novelty. We only did it, I think, uh, I did it once, and then we did it once with our old pop-up with the kids just to see what it was like. But uh, yeah, in about three weeks, we're going to get new tires, so please give us some sort of feedback on that. That's my update, and I appreciate you watching RV Daydream, and I hope to see you riding on a daydream soon. Thanks. Bye.